The National Library, in conjunction with the Office of Education Research, National Institute of Education, is proud to present to you Education in the City. May I now invite Dr. Quack to start the session. Dr. Quack. Now we know the future is uncertain, the future is fluid, the future is chaotic, technologies are going to disrupt the future, a lot of things are going to be replaced. Teaching and learning has to keep up with the pace of it. And research can help to inform, and that's why the Office of Education Research, Centre for Research in Pedagogy Practice, and a number of research centres that we have, are all focused on trying to help to continue to improve our system. How can we make students' lives better? How can we make students' learning better, right? How can students, as they go through the system, help them to cope with stress? What is stress? I think all of us are quite familiar with it, okay? It's a part of um, life, okay? So where there's actually physical and mental uh, tear and wear on our body and our minds. Okay, so in terms, if adults can have stress, why not kids, okay? Why not our children? By the way, I'm a mother of two teenage daughters, okay, so I'm there with you. <laughs> okay. okay, so what can we do as parents to actually help support our own children? Uh, watch the parental stress. Unfortunately, parents can and is a form of stress for our kids as well. One test, one exam is not going to define your child as unsuccessful or a failure or a loser. That's not going to happen. What is it that you would like your child to do Okay, and I think more important is what does your child want? Okay, because far too often when I'm doing my counselling sessions with kids, a lot of them say that uh, I'm, I want to go to this and that school. I say, oh, why? You know, is it because there's some very exciting you know, programme there? Oh no, because my mum wants me to go. Do you think that is going to help later on for the kid? Let your child do his or her own work, as I mentioned before. They are the one doing the exams, not you. Okay, so let them do it. Basically, please support your children, okay? Never mind where they are. They may be NA, they may be Express. They're still your kids. I've done some work in this area, so I'll introduce you a little bit to um, deep breathing exercises as well as uh, mindfulness and how they can help children regulate stress. So how many of you think your child has issue with test anxiety? It's actually been found to affect an estimate uh, of about 10 to 40 percent of students actually suffer from test anxiety. And due to the accumulated long-term effects, it's important to look for ways that can help children overcome test anxiety. So I was looking for a technique that is quick, that a child can use. And I thought of doing deep breathing. Okay, what about deep breathing? And I'm sure you have heard of it before, right? If you're nervous, people tell you, calm down, take a deep breath, you know? So I'm like, okay, we say that, but does it really work? You know, is it scientific? So deep breathing is just slow, diaphragmatic belly breathing. So exposed, as opposed to shallow chest breathing, deep breathing is lower down okay, in your belly. Basically, deep breathing reduces the state anxiety. Because of the reduction in state anxiety, they had a better state of mind when they took the test. And this resulted in a better improvement in test scores. So how many of you are familiar with the term mindfulness? Anybody heard of it? Basically, you pay full attention to your present moment in an open, curious, and non-judgmental manner. And I just want to highlight that for mindfulness in schools, um, a lot of it is focused on the students. If you read the Straits Times article, some schools just do mindful breathing, like two minutes before at the end of recess, okay, to help the students come down and go back to class. Are there more fun methods of mindfulness for children? It's difficult for them to sit and um, yes. breathe. No, uh, definitely. So that's why we have specialized programs for those in education and for children. Okay, so with adults, we do more sitting and uh, breathing. We do that for kids as well because breathing is something that's very easily uh, you can feel. But for children, we do more activities, so the walking and movements. How do we draw the line uh, between stress that pushes them to their full capability and stress that pushes them to their limits. Yes, it's a very fine line. I think it really boils down to, as a parent, okay, uh, how much you know about your child. So what I always encourage is get to know them first. 